This video is part of a three-part series where we do the ultimate comparison between the Bronco, the Defender, and the Wrangler. In the first video, we took all three of Red Cone, and well, we had quite a debacle getting the Land Rover up the trail and ended up with two flats. So we ended up abandoning the Land Rover on the trail overnight, and in this video, we're gonna try to get it down. Breathe, Micah, breathe. Come on, breathe! Why would Land Rover build an off-road package with 20-inch wheels? All right, so time to make a video I didn't really want to make. You see, if you saw our last Defender versus Bronco versus Wrangler video, you'll know that our Land Rover Defender is stuck like an hour and a half that way at 9,000 feet on the trail. We got two flat tires, of course, only one spare. So we got to go back and rescue it, take it down that really gnarly rock garden. So. It's the next day after we shot that. Today's a Monday, we shot that on a Sunday, and our friends over at Landover of Denver really, really helped us out on this one. It is Monday morning, and they are actually lending us a set of wheels and tires off of another Defender, the exact same size, the exact same tire, so that we can get ours off the trail and get it to a tire shop. So Steve and the folks at Landover of Denver really pulled through um, on making this happen. So big thanks to those guys. So let's load up the tires, and then go rescue a stuck Land Rover. If you're looking for cool trails in your area, you're going to want to check out an app called Onyx Off-Road. I actually use it a lot in my daily off-roading life. Uh, be sure to use Onyx to check out Red Cone. It shows you stuff like the difficulty, what to expect, and also shows you where to go because you can download offline maps for when you're out of service. So the Defender is stuck on a trail called Red Cone up here in the Colorado Rockies. And it's not really all that far up the trail, but of course it is past probably the hardest obstacles. Now when we came out here yesterday, we had the Bronco with a Sasquatch package and 35 inch tall tires and lockers and we had a Wrangler 4xE Rubicon with lockers and the sway bar disconnect. Now the rescue rig today is my personal Wrangler which is, well, it's pretty much a base model sport. So uh, it's going to be a little exciting getting up to the Defender. The reason I brought my personal Willys Wrangler and not the 4xE Rubicon or the Bronco to rescue the Defender is because those two are out drag racing the same morning we filmed this. Of course, I would like to have gotten the Defender in that drag race, but, well, it's stuck on the trail. Alright, as I approach this first little rock garden, let me talk you through my Jeep. Now the pros, it is very small and it means I've got a lot of choice in line which is good. The cons, well you're seeing it there, it's a manual transmission which does make it quite a bit harder to modulate off-road and I am a little bit rusty so bear with me as I get back into the swing of off-roading with the stick. Luckily I do have a proper low range of course. Oof, not the line I really wanted to take there. Well I figured out, there you go. Nice work. And then of course I have that limited slip rear differential, which is, um, you know, it's better than nothing, but I would much prefer a rear locker. And it also something called BLD, brake lock differentials, which will actually slow down the spinning wheel to force torque to the wheel with traction, which is another nice little feature. I think this is enough capability for 95% of folks, especially casual weekend off-roaders. Um, I mean, the big deal with this package are the tires. These are BFG KM2s that came on this vehicle and it gives me so much confidence out on these pointy jagged rocks that you wouldn't get in a standard Wrangler Sport. Number two big advantage, rock rails. Let's protect that body, guys. I mean, when you uh, start crawling bigger stuff and we're gonna use them here in a sec today, um, those rock rails are gonna be very, very important uh, in saving the side of your vehicle. Uh, and then the limited slip, not really sure how it works yet. Uh, still a brand new vehicle to me and we're gonna get a little bit more experience out here on the trail to really get an understanding of what its capabilities are. Now, one thing that is not great is the gearing. It's not short enough um, and that's part of the reason I'm having a slightly hard time figuring out this clutch. Uh, these are 345 gears and they really should be 410s for this kind of stuff, or at least um, 373s. You know, for most trail driving, it's probably fine, but when you really need to gently modulate the power, that's when it's hard because you gotta ride that clutch quite a lot. The only kind of drawback is 
really the ride quality. The short wheelbase is excellent for breakover, but certainly is a little bit more bumpy and with the solid axles, you do get a lot of head toss. Definitely recommend airing down. I'm only air down a little bit for this trail because the Defender really isn't all that high up the trail. And uh, quite honestly, I gotta get back to work immediately. Um, Cause I got some more projects to work on. I don't have time to air back up, but uh, yeah, ride quality is not great. So we've made it to the uh, most difficult part of the trail. We've got this big boulder. You can see it's just covered in uh, skid marks and it's it's just in the exact wrong space. It's about, you know, three feet long, two or so feet tall, and there's no way around it. And the issue is if you go over to the right, we've got this, which is just a door killer. You can see where that's taking a few doors out. This is actually a genuinely hard obstacle. Now, every vehicle we took up here yesterday, the Wrangler, really got pretty hung up. Nathan powered out of it and took out a wheel. The um, Defender really hung up, but we were able to stack some rocks and get it through. Uh, Bronco did better than the other two, but it still did get a little bit high centered there. So we'll see what the Tudor Wrangler does. Now, if you come up here, um, you'll actually see, hopefully, if it hasn't been stolen, <laughs> you'll see where our Defender's at. So we made it up here, made it past this big rock. That was all good. And then, <laughs> The tire killer was this little itty bitty rock, funny enough. And I see blue, and I see our defender. Yeah, so there it is. Uh, you can see missing its rear spare, we took it off, and then front right totally deflated. And actually, if you come up here, you will see the rock that actually kept taking out tires. Um, and you can see the challenge where it gets a little bit narrow through here, and this is it. This is the rock that's outcropping. My dad took it on the left side like this, and the tire was air down. It crumped against the uh, the the, uh, the sidewall of the wheel, and it cut that out. And then I tried to take it head on, gave a little bump, and apparently it shouldn't have because that took took out the other tire. So this was a rock that caused all that pain. Um, and yeah, I, I do take full responsibility, but I, I really strongly believe that a BFG would not have. Uh, actually collapsed under the load here because it has a really strong sidewall. I don't think that these all-terrain tires that comes on the off-road tire group on the Defender really have what it takes to uh, do even rocky off-roading because I just won't take it. It's pretty hard to explain just how technical this trail is, especially for a stock vehicle. So I'm going to demonstrate with these guys that came up while we were changing the spare tire on the Defender. Here we see a Toyota Tacoma, but not just any Toyota Tacoma. This one is fully kitted out with an aftermarket suspension, big tires, and all sorts of accessories. I would estimate that this vehicle has probably 70k plus, including the purchase price, in total value. And you can see he has a really hard time making it up this obstacle and eventually slams his bed into the side of the rock. Now after him came a Lexus GX who ended up getting stuck and winching himself out, and finally a fully built out Land Cruiser. This trail really pushed these vehicles to the limit. By the time the Land Cruiser got up, someone told me that it was starting to overheat, it was leaking gas, this was just an insane obstacle. It's amazing that the Land Rover actually made it up without any damage, and then somehow I managed to get a flat tire just after this really difficult rock. But going down is going to be no easy task. Sorry to be breathing heavy, I just pulled out the two spares from the back, because they're making a lot of noise. Come on. Okay, so are a lot of other things, but also for ground clearance reasons. All right, so well, I made it on top of the rock, it feels like. Okay, just gonna try to slowly, slowly modulate it. Oh, that's what I don't want to do. Oh, come on, Micah. Just taking it nice and easy. You've got like a foot from your rear tire to the rock. There we go. Okay, actually, that was great. So, um, did stall it, of course. What happened there was a limited slip kicked in, and we were actually able to traverse around um, that rock pretty well. Uh, the short wheelbase, actually, I think, made this perform much better than even the Rubicon four-door on that same obstacle, because Nathan slammed into the rock. Um, and that's, I think, largely because of the wheelbase of this rig is just much more suited for um, breakover angle stuff. All right, so Alex was um, the real MVP today and helped me uh, get these wheels up, <laughs> up the mountain because 
they do definitely compress the rear suspension of the Wrangler and I needed every bit of ground clearance that I could on that last obstacle. But we got them up here and today actually we also have the three ton floor jack as well. So uh, we don't have to use a little scissor jack. So I'm gonna place a recovery board underneath the vehicle right about there. And then we're gonna go ahead and place the jack at the location on top of the recovery board. So we've got a more stable platform. All right, so now we are going to loosen the lugs while it's on the ground. We're actually using two traction boards to get just a little bit more height on this puppy. Um, and that should be enough to definitely get the old wheel off and hopefully the new one on as well. Alex did a great job with the wheel. I mean, of course, it was all me. Now I get the uh, five-year-old job of lowering it down. Whee! <laughs> All right, so the cool thing is, you guys over at Land Rover Denver hooked us up with a wheel and tire that are the exact same size as the original. Of course, they're painted black, which honestly makes the Defender look much cooler. So, um, honestly, it was an upgrade. But <laughs> what we're gonna do, well, we're gonna turn this thing around and go down that big ass rock the other direction. Um, probably have the Wrangler go first and then follow it up with the Land Rover. We'll see. I think that'll be the plan in case this thing gets really stuck. We can use a Wrangler to kind of tow it down. Plus I want to see, that, that thing's got rock rails and if I mess up the line, it's not gonna be too big of a deal. This is a 71K, so it'd be a much bigger deal. So we'll see what happens. Come on, Mike, if we can do this. Sometimes it's even scarier going down. Alex, how am I doing? You're looking good. Just taking it nice and slow. did it. Barely. Now for the Land Rover. I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. Hold on, hold on. You're sitting on the lower control arm. I think if you took it a tiny bit to the left, Just go real slow. Are you ready? Yeah. You can probably work a little this way if you want. Bottom's gonna touch in about two inches. Come on, Micah. You can do this. on the belly now. I've got all the Land Rover weight on the skid plate, or on the lack of skid plate, I should say. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna do it. Oh, I don't wanna say that. Right yet, rear's about to come up. Holy f Holy f Breathe, Micah, breathe. Come on, breathe! Oh, dude, that took 100% of my skill. I don't have much of it, but I took all of it. All right, hop in the ring, let's just go. I don't trust the tires anymore. I just don't trust the tires. Why would Land Rover build an off-road package with 20-inch wheels? What is the point of that? And you're thinking, oh, I'll put on 17s. You can't, the smallest wheel you can get from the factory on a Defender with the six cylinder is a 19 inch wheel, which is almost just as useless. You say, oh, get the four cylinder. Don't get the four cylinder. The four cylinder is not a very good engine. You can get that one in 18s. That's the one I wanted. That's the one we had. That's the one that we, you know the story. There goes Alex and my little Tudor Wrangler, little 17 inch wheels, wow. Put a sidewall on the sides of Kentucky. And there goes the camera. And it's a shame, guys. It really is a shame, because this has one of the best all-wheel drive systems I've ever experienced. One of the best four-wheel drive systems, I should say, in the world. 
Land Rover has built one of the most incredible four-wheel drive systems that I've ever seen. And then they fit it with 20-inch wheels and off-road tires. Let me talk a little bit about some of the capability in this vehicle because yes, there is a good amount of it. I don't, I don't want to make it seem like it's horrible. It, it does have very impressive ground clearance, 11 and a half inches in the max setting for the air suspension. That is very, very good. The off-road cameras are very good. I like the off-road cameras. I like how they show, for example, where your tires are at in the front. It does have a very good approach angle. It does have a very good departure angle and the brake over is actually surprisingly good as well. Um, I like that this one has a tow package, so it's got the t recovery point in the rear, and apparently there is one buried underneath in the front also, but this is not fun. I'm not having fun, if that's not already clear. Goodyear All-Terrain Adventures, I think not. It is an adventure, actually. The, the adventure part of the All-Terrain Adventures in the Goodyear name is very spot on. Actually, the center diff lock is very smart in this vehicle. Um, it locks and unlocks on the fly. It's very quick to respond to inputs. Very nicely done. Wow, that was one of the most stressful things I have done at this job ever. Um, still like heartbeats really, really going. Big thank you to Land Rover of Denver for lending us um, two wheels and tires. Luckily, we only needed to use one of them coming down. You can see though, uh, we thoroughly used it. So thank you to Steve over at Land Rover of Denver. The rest of them, they held up okay. I think there's some, some curb rash on some of them. Nothing's dripping underneath, but um, yikes, that was, a, that was a day. That was one hell of a day. So we're gonna get this home. I'm gonna take a nap. Actually, I'm gonna do a live show and then take a nap, and we will see you on the next off-road adventure, but I'm just glad we made it down safe. I can't tell you how lucky we got. We just were zooming side-by-sides all the way up, and then the half an hour on the way down, nothing. So we lucked out there. Welcome to part three of the Wrangler versus Defender versus Bronco series. And last time we rescued that vehicle, but we weren't just gonna have it at that because Steve here. How you doing, buddy? Hey, how are you? Good, Good to see you again. He went ahead and built probably the craziest Defender, certainly in the state, maybe in the country, maybe in the world. So now it's 35s versus 35s, right? We've got a real tire in the Land Rover. Uh, Wheeler Lake, you've done this before. Yes, what yeah, great you, trip. What would you rate this trail as? Uh, we'd rate this uh, strong 7-8, depending on which line you take. 